All right, on this video, we're going to learn how to size a cantilevered beam through uh, Risa Calc. So let's give it a shot. Give me this beam right here. I'm going to start defining the spans, cantilevers from this exterior wall of this building out to here. And then we are back spanning it back to this beam here. So I'm going to pick up the first span. Ten foot three, so then we should calc. We're gonna add this beam. We're gonna call it beam oh seven. This is going to be a wood beam. Uh, let's see, we're going to check it against the triple ply 18 inch LVL. So uh, let's see, LVL. We're going to use a truss joist. We're going to use a micro lamb LVL. Uh, 2.0 is 2600 FB is what we use. Spans. The first one's 10 foot 3. Plus, we've got another span, and that additional span is going to be 14 foot 6. And then the left support is going to be free. That one's going to be pinned. There we go. That defines our span pretty good. Top flange is fully braced. We have the subfloor decking holding that top flange uh, laterally. Let's put our loads in. Let's start calculating these loads. We've got this little cantilevered portion here out to here. So half of that's going to be two feet. So. Our dead load is going to be a distributed load. Uh, 2 times 10 divided by 1,000. 0.02 kips per foot. Floor load for that same area. Floor live load for that same area. It's going to be 0.08 kips per foot. We've got, let's see, what do we have? We've got something above. I think we're okay above, so let's go ahead and analyze it. We want to change our load combinations to just be ASD since we're using um, ASD wood design here. And let's check it. Oh, looks like we didn't. Uh, find the properties quite yet. So we're at triple ply, so 1.75 times 3, 5.25 inches wide by 18 inch depth on this LVL. And here we can see if we check the calculations that it passes shear, bending, uh, axial tension and compression. We can check for uh, reactions We've got our two reactions here. We've actually got an uplift load here, so we're going to want to go ahead and um, size a hanger to take care of that uplift load at the beam. So that's going to be at uh, this location here where we're going to actually have an uplift load. So typically what you can do in this scenario is you can hang a Simpson hanger upside down. And then as long as we factor in that uh, uplift load when we size this beam here, we should be okay. Next check is going to be deflection. So we can see a total load, total deflection load. Check those against code and we should be good.